Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you guys how you can install your own locally hosted version of Shuffle. So in the previous video, I introduced you guys to Shuffle and the problem it's looking to solve and how to create a, a generic workflow and get started with Shuffle via their cloud infrastructure. Uh, however, they also offer you the ability to install it and host Shuffle yourself. So in this video, I want to show you guys how we can install our own locally hosted version of Shuffle and get that up and running. So stick around and we'll jump into it. And all right, so there are two requirements for Shuffle. Shuffle implements Docker and Docker Compose to run its images. Uh, it spins up various containers and services that handle some of the front end, some of the back end processing. And so it is heavily dependent on Docker and Docker Compose. And those are really the only two requirements. So as long as your operating system can support Docker and Docker Compose, which most uh, modern day operating systems can, then you should be able to get yourself up and running pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and actually jump over into the documentation. I'll also link in the description below to Shuffle's GitHub repository where we will follow our installation guide. So uh, they link down here to the installation guide. Again, I'll link this in the description below. And here you can see step one, make sure that we have Docker and Docker Compose installed. So let's actually go through the Docker and Docker Compose installation. I won't go into the nitty gritty of what Docker is uh, or what Docker Compose is. So this is not the video for that, but I will go through just a basic installation process. So if you guys don't already have Docker and Docker Compose, we can follow these steps to get us started. If you go into Docker's documentation here, you can select your distribution of choice and it's very easy. Uh, we will install a, a few prereqs and then we will be able to install Docker and Docker Compose. So let me just throw this off to the side and I'll get into my terminal here. So we're going to install yumutils, then we'll grab Docker's repo. And then we'll just run a simple yum install and then this will install Docker and some of the other uh, dependencies that is needed for Docker to be able to, to run. Uh, and that's it. And then we'll test with the, we'll, we'll go ahead and start the service and then we'll run a Docker run hello world just to make sure that our Docker image can reach out to Docker's hub to successfully grab images and run them within containers. So we will wait for that to finish installing and then go ahead and start Docker. And then once that's started, let's run a Docker run hello world. And this is reaching out to Docker's repo, grabbing the latest image and then running it uh, just to make sure that our Docker installation looks to be working, uh, functioning correctly. And sure enough, we get our downloaded newer image and then we get our hello from Docker. So Docker is installed, but now we need to install Docker Compose. And Docker Compose, managing your applications that implement Docker a little easier. So I can just create one generic YAML file that will grab the specific containers that I need. And we'll, we'll kind of jump into that more as we go through the installation process, but we'll grab the containers and services that I need and spin them up correctly so that they can communicate with each other because we will be spinning up a few different containers and those containers are taking advantage of services from other containers. For example, our, our front end and back end will be taking advantage of an open search container that will be running the, the open search service within it. So it needs to be able to not only install open search and get that up and running, but also make sure it can communicate with it. So here I'm going to select our uh, compose file. We're just gonna go ahead and grab the binary here. So I'll just copy and paste this command if I can grab it. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we'll curl that. We'll then give it executable permissions. And then we will go ahead and link it to our to our user bin slash Docker Compose. And so now I can run a Docker Compose dash dash version and we should get our version back and that should tell us that Docker Compose is installed correctly. So our prereqs are now done, so that looks good. So let's go ahead and now jump into Shuffle SL. And this is what makes 
Docker is so easy and so popular is look at this installation process. We're just going to run four commands and we're bringing in, we're, we're just going to run a few commands. We're bringing in not only shuffle and its dependencies, but also our apps and uh, Docker really makes installing software uh, that much easier. So, and containerization is probably here to stay. So I definitely highly recommend familiarizing yourself with tools like like Docker, like uh, Kubernetes, for example, Docker Swarm. Um, containerization, I think, is here to stay for the long run. And so I highly recommend familiarizing yourself with not only containerization and kind of how and, and how that orchestration works, but also what security tools are out there to run assessments against these containers, these images, and service configurations. But that's a topic for later videos, so let's go ahead and continue on with this. So I went ahead and installed Git because I'm just gonna run a Git clone and grab their uh, grab our shuffle repo here. I just cd it into my op directory and then I'm grabbing the, the repo here and I will cd into shuffle. And here we'll see our Docker compose file. So if we go ahead and open this guy up, we go ahead and install nano first and then open this guy up. So, and, and this is what makes the Docker compose really nice, right? Because we're bringing in various services. We're bringing in a front end service, a back end service, an Aruba service, an open search service. Uh, and here you can see the images that we're grabbing from Docker Hub's repository. So it really just makes the installation process that much easier for us um, and installs all of our services, opens up ports that are required. And so now all we'll have to do is run a Docker compose up dash D and that will reach out, grab these images, run them within containers and make sure that all that is up and running. But you'll first notice here that we need to actually make a change to our .env file. So we have a .env file that has some environment variables that we will want to set. So if I, which, but it's actually a hidden file. So if I do like an ls, we don't see it here, right? But if I do a ls-a to show out the hidden files, we see our .env file here. So I'll go ahead and open that guy up with a text editor. And here you can see all these settings we can set. So if you want to change various ports, such as like uh, you want by default, the front end will, the front end's web interface will listen on 3443 instead of just 443. So if you want to change that, you can make that change there. Like so, I'm just going to leave it as the default. If you want to set proxies uh, in front of Shuffle, you can do so here. If you want to search, use, set username and passwords for open search itself, you can set those here. Uh, but the one thing that I'm actually going to change will be the username and password for the first login to the web UI. So I'm going to say, and, and this is uh, this is needed so that we can successfully log into the web UI the first time that we start Shuffle up. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a username of admin, and then I'm just going to do a password of admin as well. And then if you're taking advantage of Shuffle's hybrid approach, uh, you can get an API key. I'll, I'll link down to more details around that in the description below. I won't dive too far into it, but you can take advantage of Shuffle's cloud infrastructure as well as your locally hosted infrastructure. So if you want to learn more about that, just reach out to their, uh, to their sales team and they can get you up and going with that, but I'll leave that blank for, for this case. It's not required. Uh, you can just take advantage of some more features if you have an API key set already. So I'll go ahead and leave that there. And now let's go ahead and so, and then you see a step here. We need to change the ownership of our shuffle database. However, since we haven't started shuffle yet, it actually doesn't exist. So once we, once we run our Docker compose up, uh, for the first time, it will grab our images and run them within containers. And then we'll actually see our directory for the shuffle database be, cr be created. And then we'll be able to change that ownership there and then restart shuffle and that'll get us up and going. So let's go ahead and run our Docker dash compose space up. And I'm not going to use the dash D flag, the dash D uh, runs it as a daemon in the background so that I can I can lose my set, I can exit out of my session and the Docker services will still be running. But so I'm just gonna go ahead and run a Docker compose up so we get all of the logs and all the output outputted to our terminal here. So if we run that, we'll see that we're now starting to pull the images from 
Docker. So we're grabbing our back end, we're grabbing our front end uh, that we see here, we're grabbing our Arubis, and, and this will only happen one time. So once we install Docker, the or sorry, once we install Shuffle and get the containers downloaded and running, then every time, then whenever we stop and start Shuffle, we, we, we don't have to wait for this download process to, to occur. This is only a one-time thing, unless you are updating. So now we're starting to get some errors about uh, our Arubis not being able to connect to our Shuffle backend, which is open search. So I'm gonna just go ahead and run a control C that forces all of this to that forces our docker compose to stop and now if i ls and dash l of h you'll see our shuffle database has been created so let's go ahead and run this command to change the ownership and then we'll be able to restart docker and then we'll be able to restart docker compose and we should be good to go so change that i'll do a ls l of h just to make sure that the changes took and so that looks good and so now i'll actually i'll run a docker compose and i'll actually do the dot d to throw it in the background here and then that and then that is our installation so if i go ahead and run a docker ps i'll show you guys just kind of some basic troubleshooting that we can do if you guys are having issues so if we run a docker com our docker ps you see our images running in our various containers so uh one 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 container to view its logs in real time I like to do is the backend. The backend is handling a lot of processes. Uh, so what I like to do once I get shuffle up and going for the first time, just to make sure everything's looking good, is I'll go ahead and run a Docker logs and then I'll copy the container ID. So that's this value here on the left for that corresponds to our shuffle backend. So I'm gonna copy this guy and then I'm gonna do a dash dash follow and that'll output the logs to our terminal here. So now Docker is actually grabbing our, so all of our apps that we talked about in the last video are actually images themselves. So here you can see like our AWS EC2 app is actually an image within Shuffle's Docker repo. So, so here if we actually go into Fricky's Docker Hub. Uh, Fricky and his team are the guys behind Shuffle. Uh, in here, they actually have hosted our some of our apps that we download during our initial install, right? So here we can see our Yara app, we see our Shuffle Tools app, we see Outlook app. So these apps that you see in the web UI within Shuffle are actually images themselves. And really what makes Shuffle super flexible and very powerful and give us the ability to actually create our own apps and allows the community to give back by creating their apps as well. And then just tagging them within our Docker repository. And the Shuffle team also has a Shuffle apps repo. So if we go into this apps repo and we'll actually download these here in a sec, you'll see a ton of different apps that the community have created as well. So let's go ahead and check in on our shuffle. Everything looks good. So I'm actually going to now connect to this guy uh, via its web UI. So let me actually grab my IP address of this box, uh, this guy here, and I'm gonna do navigate HTTPS and my IP, and then I left my front end on the default port, which is 3443. So here we get prompted to our login page. And this is now where we're going to log in with the config that we set within our .env file. So if I open this guy up again, I'm going to log in as admin with a password of admin. And so I'll hit submit and we get a successful login and now we are into our own locally hosted shuffle instance. And it's as easy as that. Again, that's, that's what makes Docker so easy and so flexible to, to get up and running. So let's go ahead and go into our apps here. And here you can see we, we, we have 55 apps. However, we have more available to us. So what I'm actually going to do is let's go ahead and download some more apps from GitHub. So if we actually look at our repo here, we could also create our own repo if we wanted to. However, by default, we just point to the shuffle apps repo. So if I actually open this guy up here, you'll see we there'll be more apps available for us that we need to go ahead and download. So you see MISP here. Again, these are just images themselves as well. 
Uh, you see Yara here. So if we like actually go into one of these, you see that we're still taking advantage of Docker's images structure to build these apps. We're just now going to download these from a common place, which is the Shuffle Apps GitHub that we have here. So let's go ahead and just, uh, we can leave this at the default. Again, if you want to add your own GitHub repo, you can. Uh, you would just need to change that there. Let's go ahead and run a force update. And now we should see, if we look at our logs, we should see that the update is being started. And here you can see it is, and we're reaching out to our Shuffle Apps repo to then grab these images and start to build them. So here you can see with these stream steps here, these images are starting to be built. So we'll go ahead and let that run and finish. And then within a few minutes, we should be able to then reload our activated apps and we should see all of our apps available to us. And all right, so once that has appeared to look finished, uh, we see all of these have been added here and it looks good to go. And now if we just refresh uh, our apps here, we should now see around like 120, yeah, 120 uh, listed out. So these are now all of our downloaded apps that we have that we can now call within our various workflows, right? So you do need to activate some of these apps that by default are not activated, uh, like Discord, for example. In the previous video, I stood up a very elementary workflow that took advantage of the Discord app. Uh, and kind of showed you guys how to create a general workflow within Shuffle. So with some apps by default, you will need to activate to be able to then call on them within a workflow. So, so we've installed Shuffle, we have our apps downloaded. Now let's make sure that we can get a, a just a very basic runtime execution works as expected. So here I'll just do a hello world test. I'll create a new workflow. And here I'll just say test for a description. And here I'm just going to take advantage of the repeat after me function. So, so if we select our change me app that just comes with the workflow by default, uh, I did not add this. We see our repeat back to me as an action and we're calling hello world. So let's go ahead and run this and just make sure that our execution uh, successfully executes and that our services on the back end and Aruba's container are working correctly. And here we see a success and we see hello world. So if we actually go into our logs, and this is a little more technical dive into Shuffle, but we can see how when we actually kick off an execution, how that's kind of happening on the back end. So here we can see it saved the hello world execution and then starts the execution. And that actually happens within the Arubis container. So if I run a Docker PS, we see we have our Arubis container here. I've just been, been tailing the back end logs. Let's go ahead and run a workflow again. But instead, let's follow our Arubis logs. So if I go ahead and run a follow there, uh, let's go back into our web UI. I'll kind of throw this off to the side. Let's go ahead and test an execution again. So the front end is getting getting my request saying, hey, let's go ahead and run this. And then is then calling the, the Arubis container to actually run our container <laughs> of our workflow. So here we can see our container actually being executed and it tags it within execution ID. So so that all looks uh, to be up and running good. Our, our generic install and app download of Shuffle has been completed and initial health checks and all that look good. Uh, go ahead and play around with the with the web UI. Uh, you see we can go into actually admin here. You can, you can add new users here if you like. And you can also, they also link to the docs and the docs actually come as part of the install. So you notice that I select the docs here and I, I don't get redirected to a, another URL where the docs are actually hosted. They're actually bundled in as part of Shuffle. So here you can actually you familiarize yourself with some of the features of Shuffle. Um, in, in the next few videos, I'll cover more of a real life workflow, taking alerts from Wazoo, posting them to Shuffle, having that automatically start a workflow within Shuffle that creates a ticket within the Hive and runs some analysis via Cortex. And will really help to kind of show you guys how powerful this tool really can be. But I think that wraps it up for this uh, for this video. Again, we went over a shuffle install. We now have the ability to really create our own workflows of which we will cover in future videos. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.